welcome to Matthew's Random Ramblings. Today I'm going to be reading from a script to ensure that I have all my thoughts together as my brain is a bit scrambled right now. So, Pokemon based on inanimate objects. A lot of people find them to be stupid. These people are effectively being culturally insensitive whether they're aware of it or not. Believe it or not, the very concept of monsters in Japan revolves around yokai, spirits that can take on all forms of shapes and sizes, as well as possessed about just about anything, living, dead, or otherwise inanimate. Not to mention pretty much all of them have some sort of actual inspiration behind them. Grammar and muck represent oil pollution, Catholic and reason represent air pollution, trash and garbador represent the overabundance of trash in metropolitan areas, mostly in New York though. And while they might not look like inanimate object Pokemon, Louder and x are based on a boombox and pipe organ respectively, and can be seen as representing noise pollution, though Wimsmer is a bit of an odd one out in that regard. Theft Key represents tales of fairies who steal keys. This is pretty much the only way you could get a fairy steel dual type for balance, too. Voltorb is the representation of the classic JRPG treasure chest mimic monster, like the ones in Dragon Quest, which is far more popular in Japan. I can't really defend Electrode, though. It's pretty stupid, as far as I can tell. The overworld icons for them in the games are right-side-up item balls even though they should be upside down. And it's easy enough to present a subversion when they look so similar and someone could easily be confused by them. It should be noted that the idea of them being living Pokeballs also ties into the concept of Yokai. And while it's never outright stated, Voltorb and Electrode could be Yokai possessing Pokeballs. Kafarigus, or how you pronounce that, represents ancient Egyptian tomb curses. Yeah, I know, that's that's all I have. I know, it's still not quite enough, but, you know. Nose Pass is hardly the only living Moai statue that come out of Japan, but you never hear anyone complaining about the ones in Kirby, Gradius, or Yu-Gi-Oh, which are mostly based on the ones in Gradius and other Konami games. But, there's also this one. Hot Edge's evolution line are basically yokai that represent magical and cursed weapons. Litwick and its evolution line are just like Demi Marimon and Candlemon in that they represent the yokai equivalent of a willow with a wisp. While I'm not fond of its design, Alloy was most likely a reference to a World War II aircraft carrier design that ultimately didn't go over so well in the end because it was made from ice and well, what do you expect? Now, I'm not going to lie, there are some Pokemon I simply don't know enough about to defend. I mean, Vanillite was introduced in the same generation as you get an ice cream cone item for recovery, but I live in the West Coast, so I wouldn't be able to properly understand if this is supposed to be culturally significant to New York. But if you look in the right places, and examine them from every angle, you might find some cleverness in the designs of all Pokemon, that makes them at least somewhat worthwhile, just not always for battling with. Until next time, stay up tuned.